and Chris Mather on the um, mechanical recorder for North Northumberland. And I've just been looking at these marvellous bluebells, which are of course the UK's archetypal spring flower. And they're very important for us because we hold about 50% of the world population of these beautiful bluebells. There are bluebells found in other parts of the world and in Europe, but they're not it's quite the same species as ours. So let's have a look at them because they're really important plants for us and they're absolutely archetypal spring plants. Now, so what makes a native bluebell a native bluebell? Well, the first thing is that if you look at the shape of the plant itself, you'll see that all the flowers are hanging down one side of the stem. And all on this low side, and none up here is one. So it's the first thing is the general shape of the plant and foreign bluebells, alien ones, have on the whole the flowers standing up. But also the individual flowers, there's one, have the tube which makes up most of the flower, quite a long tube and it curls back and the sides of the tube are almost parallel. And once again that's typical of our native bluebell. Its Latin name is Hyacinthus non scriptus. No, it isn't. It's Hyacinthoides non scriptus. We'll cut that out. And the third thing, and here of course I've got to use my hand lens, my favourite favourite hand lens, is to look inside the flower and the anthers, the male parts, produce the pollen. In this plant a white, creamy white colour, and that tells me again that this is a native bluebell. If this was uh, a garden bluebell, Spanish bluebell, or a hybrid bluebell, they would be blue, bluish. So this is a lovely native bluebell, and there are swathes of them here, and it's just a lovely, lovely thing to see. Now I'm in a woodland. I live in a, a village in Northumberland, and. I mean, it's lovely woodland, but of course we're in lockdown at the moment because of COVID-19. But many of the plants I'm going to show you today you will be able to find in rough corners of parks, sometimes on road verges even, if there's a little woodland bordering it. Um, but many odd corners of parks will have some of these flowers in. You don't have to go out into the countryside to see them. And of course, if you're really lucky, you can. And the second one which is growing here is windflower. The Latin name is anemone, anemone nemorosa. Uh, wood anemones people call them, but I think windflowers is a much nicer name. And you'll see they have these beautiful six petals, slightly raggedy around the edges, slightly sort of curly almost, and these ones are very slightly pink. Sometimes they're quite dark pink, sometimes they are almost purple, flushed purple flowers. And the leaves are quite typical of a lot of spring flowers in woods, quite heavily divided. And we'll see some hopefully later on, which have very similar leaves. So if you get these in your mind, these are, say, quite heavily divided, reasonably sharply pointed at the ends. It's typical of, of windflower. And of course it's called windflower because when the wind blows through the, through the trees, these sway around in the wind. They're very, very light, very um, uh, easily moved flowers. So this is uh, another typical woodland flower in the spring, anemone nemorosa, wood anemone of windflower. Now, I think we'll go and see if we can find the one that looks like this or the leaves look like this and then immediately you'll be able to compare one with the other. Now, this is a really pretty plant, I think, and it's one that you might not have seen before, but it's surprisingly common. I've found it in lots of places in Northumberland, on road verges, roundabouts, and in its native woodland. Um, this is a plant which its technical name is Adoxa. Its Latin name is Adoxa moschatalina, but it's colloquially known as Town Hall Clock which is a particularly good name for it and it's 
unique in the British flora because the, the flowers not only sit round the stem but there is also an extra flower sitting on top. So there are five flowers, one facing north, south, east and west and one facing upwards. And um, the leaves are very similar to the leaves of wood anemone that we saw earlier on. But once you've got your eye in, you can in fact spot that the leaves are different because they're much blunter. There are other technical differences, but they're much blunter leaves. And um, so the flowers are, are, are very pretty, but you do need, as always, a hand lens to make them work really well. And I'm just going to have a look at this one. So it has these five flowers with little green petals and the one on top. And the four around the side, obviously it's called a town hall clock because it looks like the great clock that we have on town halls or at Waterloo Station. Um, but it's got this extra one on top. And many years ago, long before I was born, children would ask their parents, um, why does it have this extra flower on top? And mother would say, oh well, it's so the Spitfire pilots can tell the time. Which I think is a really nice story. Um, it's, uh, it makes botany come alive, that sort of thing. So this is Town Hall Clock, Adoxa Moschatalina. A very nice plant and a lovely array of it here. Now, here's a clump of another very common woodland plant, really just coming into flower now. This is Ramsons, Allium ursinum. Why it's called Allium ursinum? Ursinum ought to mean something to do with bears, but I don't know quite why it's that. Um, anyway, um, and it's uh, uh, quite a, a plant which is quite invasive because it's a native, but once you've got it, you've usually got a lot of it. We've only got one clump here, but we shall see probably as we walk through the woods um, that it will carpet huge areas of woodland. It really takes over. So it's a very successful plant. Um, and it has very nice um, white flowers. Uh, the flowers are um, in what uh, looks like six, six petals. It's two sets of three, actually, in uh, one under the other. And these really wide leaves that look a bit like... Uh, a bit like Lily of the Valley, which is not unrelated, I have to say, to, to these plants. It's not very far away in the, uh, in the great world of taxonomy. And the flowers have these um, papery structures underneath, which is called a spathe. And the, that's typical of this family. Um, this is the uh, onion family or the garlic family. And most of them have this well, papery structure. It starts out being on either side of the flowers and then as the flowers open it splits apart and you can see it hanging down the side on this one. So this is uh, wild garlic or ramsons and uh, I'm told you can make very nice soup out of it. Um, I say I'm told because I've tried and I have to tell you the soup was very green but I didn't find it very enticing. Perhaps that's just my lack of cookery skill rather than my um, Oh, the wild garlic itself. Anyway, Ramsons, a very common woodland plant. And once again, it's the sort of thing that you'll find um, you know, perhaps in hedgerows um, where there's been woodland in the past, uh, you may well find this, uh, uh, this plant. Right. Right, I'm now standing next to another typical spring flower. This is um, wood sorrel. It's an interesting plant because uh, not only does it grow in woodlands in the spring, but also you can find it in places where woodland has been. Very often if you're walking along on the road verge of some wood sorrel, very often that means that that piece of, of ground has at some stage had a bit of a wood on it. And it's a lovely plant. Um, it's lovely white flowers, again, rather like some other ones we've seen, with slightly darker veins, which makes it particularly pretty. Um, it tends to open only in bright sunlight. It's, uh, it's, they're, they're almost open, but they will get a little bit wider. Um, but what makes it interesting for me is the beautiful colour of the leaves. They're such a lovely lime green colour, quite like most other leaves that one sees this time of year. And they're particularly obvious because they are, tend to be um, parted into threes, get these heart-shaped uh, leaflets. 
And normally there are three of them. But of course, if you're really lucky, uh, you can search around and find one which is four-leaved. And um, people believe that um, shamrocks, uh, which Irish, uh, Irish flower, um, are trefoils at their clovers, but in fact they're not. They are the leaves of this plant, uh, wood uh, sorrel, uh, Oxalis acetacella. And it's called in Latin acetacella because it's got a lemony flavour, um, acidic flavour, hence the Latin name. And you can actually try, try eating it. Um, you take a, take a piece of leaf and pop it in. Yes, Ooh, yes, quite a nice, gentle, lemony flavour. Um, you can always put some in your gin and tonic. Uh, so this is wood sorrel, a lovely spring plant, Oxalis acetacella. Now, one of the reasons that we get lots of plants in woodland in spring uh, is because, of course, the trees in early in the year don't have uh, their leaves on. And so there's plenty of light getting through to the ground underneath the trees. Uh, it's now the third week in April, and by the time the leaves come on, of course, it'll get too dark down uh, on the floor of the woodlands, and all these springtime plants will disappear. Um, they do flower in sequence. We've seen bluebells, which are one of the last ones, really, before the leaves start start to uh, to, to cover the uh, the woodland. But we almost the earliest one is less celandine, and uh, that's been flowering now for about a month, and it's almost over. But we're going to see some just down here. These are almost over now, um, because as I've said, they flower quite early in the year. So these have been flowering probably for three, perhaps even four weeks. And uh, they're quite pretty yellow flowers, uh, kidney-shaped leaves, which are rather like the uh, leaves of marsh marigold, which you may have seen in another film. And they are, in fact, quite closely related to marsh, marsh marigold. They're not the same genus, but um, they're, they're quite close. This is Lesser Celandine, Picaria verna, Verna means spring, very appropriate. And in fact, there are several sorts of lesser celandine. They all look more or less the same. And botanists call them subspecies rather than species because they're very closely related. And there are several subspecies of lesser celandine. And the, there are two common ones, and they're very easy to tell apart. You have to wait until they've been flowering for about three or four weeks. Uh, so this is an ideal moment. And um, this one is the subspecies which has little bulbs in the axils, that's the joint between the stem and the leaves. They have little bulbs, little white, creamy white bulbs, and it's a, a, strat a reproduction strategy. They reproduce by seed, but they also spread by releasing the bulbs. They drop off the stems, maybe they get picked up by birds or um, our feet, and they get transported across the wooden floor. So it's not putting all your eggs in one basket. They're, they're optimising their ability to reproduce by producing little bulbless. Uh, there's another subspecies that doesn't do that. Stems have no bulbs on them at all, but this one does. And uh, uh, very often you get them growing together, um, or within a few yards of each other. But uh, two different subspecies of, of uh, lesser celandine. It's quite fun to see if you can find both of them, one with bulbs and one without. But you have to look at this time of year. Early in the year, the bulbs won't have formed and you won't see them. <coughs> right, now we're going to finish off with uh, another woodland plant which has been flowering for a little bit. I say flowering, uh, but you could be forgiven for not thinking it's actually got any flowers at all. Because uh, this is dog's mercury and the flowers are are very unusual. Let's have a look. Now you can see that not only have I got my trusty hand lens, but I've also got the other accoutrement which all good botanists need, and that's a firm pair of boots to get in the mud. Um, now this says dog's mercury, mercurialis perennis, and I think it's called dog's mercury because um, mercury is an emetic. 
and it was quite likely that if the dog was feeling a bit poorly, uh, it might have well have eaten dog's mercury to make itself sick and recover, get rid of whatever it had eaten that it shouldn't have done, and uh, hence the name. So it's probably an, an emetic. But the, what's interesting about these plants is firstly that they have very curious flowers. They don't really have um, petals at all, um, but the, uh, they, they do actually have uh, um, proper flowering parts. But also that some flowers are male and some flowers are female. Normal, most, uh, most British wild plants, the, each flower is hermaphrodite. It has male parts, it has anthers and uh, it has um, female parts, not dog's mercury. Dog's mercury, each plant is either totally male or totally female. The word that we use is dioecious. And um, so in a, in a patch, sometimes it will be all chaps. There won't be any ladies at all. Uh, other patches, it might be all ladies and no men. This patch is mixing. There's some men and some ladies. So um, we can find one here, uh, here's one I'm going to pick it, here's one which is um, a male and I can see that it's got anthers hanging out of what pass for flowers, they're not uh, really much like flowers at all and the females you can see here because they're now about to produce some seed, um, so they've been flowering for quite a bit. So it's an interesting plant, uh, it's a um, classic woodland plant uh, and again it's been flowering for some, some little few weeks. So this is dog's mercury, Mercurialis perennis, uh, and it will carry on, the leaves will carry on um, in the wood um, for many months. You'll see them, the same, same plant, uh, will, the leaves will carry on after it's flowered, um, perhaps for five, six, even eight months. Um, absorbing all the, um, the sun's rays, building up their strength so they can flower in the following spring. Well, I hope you've enjoyed today's outing. Tomorrow, um, I think we're going to see if we can find a rather damp piece of grassland, not really quite a wet meadow, but almost like that, but to find some damp grassland and look for some spring flowers that grow in that sort of environment. Quite different from the flowers that we found in this uh, woodland today. Thank you very much.